Chiefs Commanders. There's a new sheriff in town. It's been a while since we had a meta-defining commander come into the game, but uh, with the new simulation patch and alpha plugins, we have Black replacing probably Rogers and Reinhardt. Now that Rogers and Reinhardt didn't get a lot of great skills in the alpha plugins, and they're so easily disarmed by Elf, airships needed someone to turn to. They have Dragon Slayer, but we have Black now. Black and penetration gear and damage reduction gear. Uh, I don't have a proper name for this build yet. I was thinking Thor's Black Hammer, but that doesn't seem to roll off the tongue very well. Uh, but Thor is the one who sent me the first replay. And I have to say, there has been like a convergent evolution of the character or, or uh, Commander Black. JDB built Black the first day he came out years ago. Uh, P's been playing him ever since. Other players have been trying Black out. It, it, Black, Thor got me the first replay, so he's getting credit for just putting penetration gear on him to show what the, the best offense skill can do. The best offense skill turns his defense into damage. When you awaken 600% defense, things get crazy. In his build, he was using Breakdown Vega skill, which doesn't give a lot of value here. Uh, but this is the first replay of kind of showing it off and seeing what it could do. Um, so I took this idea and I said, how can we min-max this to make it the best possible? So here's the big hit that really sh you know, shakes the world. Two billion Two billion damage, pretty good. And you gotta remember, this elf here does have it's deranged elf, so it's gonna have max re uh, gear and leadership, or darn near close to it. Uh, so in my replays, mine aren't exactly the same, but they're very similar, and they're gonna be working off the same concepts. So here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so the best offense skill, what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn your defense stats into damage. That's what it does. Okay, so that's gonna be our primary damage source. We're not gonna be using terror space or spell damage. It's just gonna be raw combat damage provided by turning our defense into damage. Okay, we can awaken 600% defense. That's a lot of would-be damage, but we only get value out of it when we trigger the best offense, 60%. Very good, okay? But in order to really get the value, we need to get uh, the damage through the opponent's stats. So we have to run 100% penetration gear. I'm gonna throw up this info graph here. So this is the build concept I'm working on, and it, and it keeps changing. Honestly, like you can kind of see I got the, the shadow uh, chest piece and fearless pants there. Uh, but there's, uh, I want to explain the breakdown of it because I'll just admit straight up, this is a very complicated build. The, the long and short of it is black with penetration and uh, a heavy reliance on those skill triggers and destructive power, Lady and Beast's 80% hit skill. Uh, he's going to be able to basically one-shot Elf. So that's what this is all about, trying to get away, uh, found, find a way to kill Elf. And I, th I think we found it here. So uh, the, the cornerstone of the build is 100% penetration and destructive power. And 600% awakened defense, or a lot of defense, right? So, how do we get 100% penetration gear? The Dawn Hall gives us 10%. The Alcade or Wild Road Rep Ro Rose weapons give us up to 24% each. Devil's Touch gives you 36%, that's the helmet. Three-piece Andromeda gem set gives you 10% for a total of 109 at max level gear. Uh, you don't need to be 109, you can be 100 even, just not 99, 90, 90, or 100 to get the best out of the build. Uh, and that means gear over level 40. It's a very expensive build, super high meta, but it's also potent if you're not 100% penetration. And I have replays I'll be showing of my own tests and trials uh, to, to, to prove that. But that's the cornerstone, okay? The augmented fourth skill is Lady and Beast's 80% destructive power. That's where all the damage comes through when you trigger your best offense skill. Now, the other gear, the other stats, what should we go for? Should we go for more defense to hit even harder? Well, we're going to be hitting hard enough. That's not really a main concern. HP is nice because that's going to be our lowest stat. But there's also Crit Wither, Dodge, and Damage Reduction. Crit Wither is not too big of a concern because Elf is our main combatant and she has... What are her options? Curse and Tear Space damage. Well, damage reduction works on Tear Space and Curse spell damage. So Dodge, not, not going to be any value to us. Crit Wither, not going to be any value to us. Defense, some value. HP, some value. And damage reduction. So I'm thinking, let's focus damage reduction. Run HP as well to kind of round out our defense stats. Because there's no point in having a million defense if you only have one HP, right? So uh, just kind of balancing up the scales here make us a little more survivable. Because he doesn't need a full slot to one shot or hit really hard. Okay, so what does that gear look like? Well, the chess piece is up to you. It doesn't provide damage reduction in any of those stats, but it does provide resistance weakened, and this build is very vulnerable to SWE. The troops we're gonna be using don't have tear space, none of our skills can beat uh, strength and weaken effect, so the resistance weakened provided by shadow is probably gonna be best in slot, only if you know you're going against infantry, though. If you're going against walkers, it's not going to have any value, right? So uh, this is like for an elf build. I'm just leaving it up there because there's room to negotiate on this build. This is the first video I've done on it. We're going to be exploring it. Uh, and it's going to be easy to test because we have the simulated uh, you know, patch in the game now. So 
Okay, how do we get damage reduction gear? Well, the Beetlejuice or Fearless Pants will be just fine. 36% on level 50 gear there. Uh, the Tier 12 Defense Troops have a built-in 10 to 30%. And then Three Piece Cassiopeia has another 10%. There is an Aegis Hall, but we need the penetration from the Dawn Hall. Uh, but we can get up to 61%. So 100% penetration, 61% damage reduction. We're going to be very tanky. We're going to hit really hard. And we have an 80% guaranteed hit skill. Now that leads us to the gems. What do we do with the gems? Well, we know we have to have three-piece Andromeda. We know we have to run three-piece Cassiopeia for survivability. But the three-piece Cassiopeia isn't essential. So the three-piece Andromeda definitely is. Scorpio. Should we run Scorpio? Well, you got to ask yourself, if the best offense triggers and destructive power doesn't and you miss, then you get no value. But if Scorpio triggers and the best offense triggers, you get a huge hit. So... What happens, though, when Scorpio and Destructive Power crit? Well, then you only get the Scorpio damage. You have to miss to get value out of Destructive Power. So are you losing anything? And the answer is, is based off my gear, actually, Scorpio hits harder. It's just way less reliable. Um, but I went ahead and included in the gems because we need gems, and Guaranteed Hit is generally always good. Uh, stats are going to be good there. For now, I'm thinking Scorpio is definitely the gem set to go with. Cepheus, great for disabling Elf's heal. Like, listen, we're not going to be able to be one-shotting all the Elf's. They're going to start running damage reduction, or damage reduction gear as well. They're going to get off their HP builds. Uh, and then uh, three-piece Cassiopeia for a little more damage reduction. There you go. So three-piece Andromeda, Scorpio, Cepheus, Cassiopeia. The f if you have the funds for the fourth gem and you want to go for something... <laughs> Gemini or Capricorn. I'm not big on Gemini because I, I, I'm i going to hate it when I trigger Gemini and Destructive Power because I'm going to be not hitting as hard as I potentially could with the Destructive Power. But this image is available in the description below. Click more. It's down there. You can share it with your friends guild. We need to come up with a better name than Thor's Black Hammer. Put it in the comments below if you have a good suggestion or any uh, recommended tweaks to this build. But uh, it's definitely meant to face down elves. That's the idea here. So that's what we're going for. Uh, let's show some good replays. Okay, so what's the damage look like? Well, you have to remember, I don't have ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in penetration gear, and I don't have twenty or $30,000 in research for airships. So my results will vary a bit, but my opponent has very similar uh, research and gear to me. So let's take, I'll jump in simulated battle, show you what I'm working with here. Destructive powers, the four skill, 600% dodge awaken, penetration gear, and then just stats and uh, uh, chest pieces in, in the pants are just, just stats for defense stuff. But mostly I'm working on the penetration here. I'm not even trying to run the damage reduction because that's not really the essential part of the build. The damage reduction is the, or the penetration is the main part. Um, I am running tier 12 HP troops in the back. Just for reference, though, I don't think that's the best build because if you're running, if you're going against infantry and you're running the shadow chest piece, you don't actually need the tear space damage for SWE insurance. Okay, so let's take it into the simulated battles. Here's the best replays I've got. Now, I was able to beat Elf, I think, seven out of eight times. Okay, now his elf is running Spirit Short. I think there's better choices for his elf. His gear is pretty reasonable, though. He has the right build going on. Uh, so let's start with this replay. So some of the replays are going to be showing off uh, Scorpio hits. Some of them are going to be showing Destructive Power hits. But uh, here's a Destructive Power Battle Seasons, which is just a 20% skill. So Destructive Power, best offense. I'm going to miss. So here's the max hit. This is the ideal hit. Boom. 3.4 billion. That's a big hit. That's a bigger hit than my Gilly does. Gilly hits for like 1 to 2 billion. Remember, this is a max leadership comm, though. And, and either way, it's a, it's an airship comm. So anyway, I lost half my troops. Here's another destructive power. Best offense. Another hit should be half of what that was. Should be like uh, 1.5 billion. 1.4 billion. Okay, so that's good. But look at it. We're almost one-shotting this elf with, with half a stack of troops. Really powerful stuff there. Okay, the next one's going to be half slot. Okay. This might not. This might be a dud. Destructive power, best offense. One more hit. Okay, another 1.5 billion, 1.4 billion, something like that. Perfect. Okay, so there's our data. Okay, with just destructive power, we're doing 1.6 billion against this elf. Uh, not bad. Not wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Three billion. That that was the half slots. So three billion is a destructive power hit. Okay, really good. Now, what happens when Scorpio triggers? Okay, Scorpio is reliant on Crit Wither, right? If Crit Wither's in play, you're going to be in trouble. Elf like to run Crit Wither. There it is, 5.1 billion. Scorpio hit, best offense, 5.1 billion. It hit harder than Destructive Power, but I'm very vulnerable to Crit Wither. And a lot of Elves run that sure chest piece and more Crit Wither. So here's the Destructive Power. I think this is just a base hit. Yeah, this is a base hit without the bonuses from all the defense damage, the best offense. So pretty weak if you don't get your skill triggers, which is, is normal. No skill triggers, no major damage. And I don't have 100% penetration. That's something worth considering. So Destructive Power, Battle Season, one more time. Should be 1.4 billion. Or oh, we didn't do the best offense, so it's a weak hit. Yeah, it's a weak hit. 
So 80% destructive power, 60% the best offense, very high chance of triggering both. And if you do trigger a Scorpio and a destructive power, uh, you, you lose value for the destructive power. But oh, here's a Cepheus, Cepheus jumps in. 3.4 billion, and that's with the HP troop. So um, very obvious that this is a very potent build, okay? And durable, but not that durable. You saw my front row getting tore up by that elf. Okay, so, uh, and that's because I'm running basically just no damage reduction, none. I, I don't have the Cassiopeia, I don't have the Fearless pants on, uh, so I'm just getting ripped apart by her curses and tear spaces. So the survivability greatly increases. And that's that's the black penetration build. I'll throw one more replay up as we talk about it to tie it all together. Um, I think there's some things that people need to remember is that battle, uh, uh, destructive power ignores Roger's defensive stance, goes behind it. Lady and Beast always had this. Um, King always had this. Plasma's dodge always had this. Rita's dodge always had the ability to hurt Roger's defensive stance. Um, but no one ever used it because it didn't hit very hard. It was just like a lose less skill. When you combine it though with the best offense, now it's super potent. All right, let's go back to the gear real quick and kind of go over some trade-offs I'm a little unsure about. So as far as the gem stats are concerned, should you run crit, accuracy, or damage in the weapons and helms when you can? Well, attack isn't terrible, but we're getting most of our attack from defense anyway. So we can subsidize our attack with either crit or accuracy. The problem with accuracy is we really want our destructive power to go off. Okay, Hitting with penetration gear is good, but if you don't have the, uh, the best offense triggered, and you just land it, and, and you, you land a hit with just the best offense, you're going to do okay. Um, you're going to do quite good. So I think there's a, there's a there's an argument for accuracy here. There's also an argument for crit, okay? I just think attack is probably the lowest one, all right? So either crit or uh, accuracy. Crit is nice because you are going to be running against crit wither. It's just a thing, man. Infantry run a lot of crit wither. Um, it almost they, they almost run so much that you're better off just hoping that you land the destructive power because remember, destructive power doesn't crit. So you don't really need crit, but if you're going to be running Scorpio and you know Scorpio hits really hard, that can be the cherry on top sometimes that one shots your opponent, your elf uh, opponent. So it might be worth doing. A uh, little up in, the, up in the air there. As far as the defense stats are concerned, I kind of went over that already. I like the resistance weekend, especially if you know you're going against infantry. Plus, there's not too much to gain from the HP or defense because you're going to be having so many stats elsewhere from research. Uh, a little bit of resistance weekend goes a long way at the high level because it just scales differently. Okay, yeah, like what, what is 50% HP going to do for you when you already have 1,000% HP as opposed to what is 50% resistance weakened going to do for you when you have zero, okay? So, yeah, that, that's the idea there. If you know anything else about this, uh, this build or any ideas that you think might work, put it in the comments below. If you want this image, you can download it in the description below. And while you're there, hit a like on this video if you want to see more simulation builds as they come out. And if you're not already subscribed... Please do so, and uh, special thanks. Uh, special thanks. Special thanks to all the new patrons that joined the channel uh, because the sponsorship fell through. But um, you guys are amazing. Thanks for doing that. Uh, my name is Melt. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.